Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is a MacBook Pro 2012 and it's going through a boot loop. So if I log into the account, then it's going to give me an error message. So I'm trying to log in now and this progress bar is moving along rather slowly. And what happens is that it goes into a boot loop. It says here, your computer restarted because of a problem. Press a key or wait a few seconds to continue starting up. And basically this will just happen over and over again. So today I'm going to show you how to actually fix this issue. So the first thing we're going to be using is the SanDisk USB drive. So this is 120 gigabytes, but all you need is anything that's 16 gigabytes or larger. Could be a USB flash drive like this, or it could be an external hard drive with a USB port. All I'm going to be doing is installing a copy of the macOS operating system on this so that we could boot into the computer and then copy our data. So we're going to be using this first of all, and we're probably going to need a destination hard drive as well. So I'll leave a link to these in the description so that we can know what to do with it. So the reason we're going to do this is because the fix I'm going to be recommending is potentially destructive. Then we want to make sure that we have a backup of your data. However, if you don't need to do a backup and you just want a working computer, then you can go ahead and skip ahead to the next section. So today I'm going to show you how to make a kind of macOS boot disk. And the reason that we want to do this is because we want to be able to access our data and make a backup of our files. So we're going to be using this SanDisk USB drive and also we're going to require some kind of larger drive, normally a half a terabyte or a terabyte in size minimum. And we're going to be using both of these things to make a backup of the internal data. So the first thing is that we need a drive which we don't mind wiping completely. So make sure that this is something that you don't have any essential data on. And what I'm going to do is to plug it into the side of the computer into one of the USB ports. Then we're going to press the power button here and hold down the option key. So I'm going to hold down the option key here. And when we have this boot menu come up, what I'm going to do is to press Command R. That's going to put us into internet recovery. So I prefer doing it this method because sometimes when you hold Command R, it doesn't register and it tries to boot up again. But if you hold down the option key, then you kind of know that it's gone through that boot process. So at this stage here, we need to enter our network. So I'm going to go ahead and enter our local Wi-Fi network. Or you can plug in the Ethernet cable into the side port here. So when the globe is spinning, it means that it's downloading the internet recovery partition. What you should do is make sure that you're charged and plugged in because this process might take a bit of time. So once we've logged into the recovery partition, we can go ahead and install macOS onto this little thumb drive here. So the way to do this is that we're going to click on disk utility here and press continue and then it's gonna scan for all of our drives. So the Macintosh HD is the internal drive here, which we wanted to make a backup of. And the USB drive here is the one that we're gonna install a new version of macOS on so that we can go ahead and log in and see where the data is. So I wanna click on the SanDisk Cruiser drive and click on the Erase button here. And we're gonna call this one USB drive. We're gonna save this as a macOS journal drive and then press Erase. So before we do this, just make sure there's no important data on this. This is just going to be used to install macOS on. So I'm going to press the Erase button. So once it's done, I'm going to press the red close button here, and then I'm going to click the button Reinstall OS X. So if you might notice that this is the original recovery partition for this particular MacBook Pro. So this is probably macOS 10.8. But uh, it doesn't matter, for the purposes of this, we're going to be using this to do the boot recovery drive. So I'm going to press reinstall OS X, press continue, and we're going to make sure that it's giving us an error message because it can't connect to the internet. I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi menu here, and we're going to connect to, and we're going to, connect to our Wi-Fi network. Also, if you have any trouble connecting to the Wi-Fi network for whatever reason, you can always plug in an Ethernet cable. And as long as this is connected to your router, then you're going to be online. So we just need to press try again to continue. And here we're going to be reinstalling macOS 10.8. So this is the recovery partition that initially came with this MacBook Pro 2012. However, for the purposes of creating this boot disk, then it doesn't actually matter which version of macOS we're going to be using. So here we're going to press continue and then continue here. And we're just going to agree and agree here. And the crucial bit here is that we don't want to select our Macintosh HD yet. This might be a step towards actually repairing this computer. However, I'm going to install it on this USB drive first as a precaution so that we can log in and do a backup. So here I'm going to press install. And basically, it's going to download the entire operating system and then install it onto this drive. So this might take a bit of time. It's saying 25 minutes. Just depends on the speed of your internet connection. So just let that run and let it continue. So once that process is complete, it's going to map. So once that process is complete, it's going to automatically try to boot into the USB drive. And now it's doing an installation and it's going to continue the process of installing macOS 10.8 onto here. This is going to take a bit of time too. So now that the install process is completed, we're going to boot off this disk. We're going to... So now that the install process is completed, we're going to do the full setup here. So I'm just, going to... I'm just going to set this up as if it's a new computer. We're not going to transfer information. We're just going to get into the computer, skip all this stuff, continue here. Just make an account and make sure that we log into the computer. 
So we're going to start using our Mac. So we're now logging into the computer. So we're now logging into the USB stick. So this is going to give us access to all of the internal files here. So, so if I go and open up Finder, so I'm going to open up Finder and you'll see here we have the USB drive attached. And I want to see what's on the internal drive. So I'm just going to open up Disk Utility. So I'm going to do a search. Do a search. I'm going to type in Disk Utility and find this in Finder. And what I'm going to do is to mount the internal drive. So this one has got File Vault enabled. So what I'm going to do is to control click on the drive, click unlock. So if you don't have file vault enabled, then you should just be able to find this through Finder, but I'm going to open up this one using the local administrator password. So once the drive is mounted, I can go ahead and click on it in Finder, and then we're going to find all of our user data here. So if we go into users, for example, then we're going to be able to find our user folder, and then most users data is kept within that folder. So we can go ahead and make a copy of that. So we can either copy it onto the USB drive itself, or if you plug in an external hard drive, you can just drag and drop this folder onto that drive. So I've plugged in a one terabyte hard drive. And what we're going to do is a backup of the internal drive onto here. So I'm going to go to Carbon Copy Cloner, which is my go to cloning application. I'm going to download and we can go ahead and download Carbon Copy Cloner 6 if you're using a newer version of Mac OS. However, because this recovery image on this USB flash drive is a bit older, we're going to go ahead and scroll down and download Carbon Copy Cloner 4. So this is just an older version that supports this operating system. Of course, we could actually also upgrade the operating system to the latest version. And then we could use the latest version of Carbon Copy Cloner as well. So here in Downloads, I'm going to open up Carbon Copy Cloner. And here we're going to press Open again. I'm going to move to the Applications folder. And now we're going to press Agree, Don't Check, and then Trial. So the free trial is all we need for this scenario. So the source we want to select is the Macintosh HD. So here within Carbon Copy Cloner, I'm going to select the source. So I can't actually select Macintosh HD because of a mismatch with the operating system level. Of course, I could actually upgrade the operating system of the USB flash drive just by downloading the, the Mavericks upgrader. But for now, what I'm going to do is to choose folders instead. I'm going to choose folders on Macintosh HD. So I'm going to select individual user folder, press OK. You can select the destination. I'm going to put it on my external drive, which is the orange drive here. I'm going to put it on a specific folder. So I'm going to put it on the external drive. And I put this new backup folder here and press OK. Then I'm going to press the clone button. And then that's going to make a full backup of the user folder. I'm also going to do one for the library folder too. So both of these are going to get fully backed up. Just let that complete. It might take a bit of time. So sometimes I might say that it has encountered a physical read error. We're just going to press OK anyway. So this might be due to a physical read error of the internal hard drive. So here we're going to press OK and continue on. So while I'm waiting for the backup to complete, I'm also going to actually do an upgrade. So this computer was using High Sierra. So what I'm going to do is to overwrite the internal drive with a new operating system of High Sierra. And because this computer, for some reason, doesn't have a recovery partition, I'm going to make one here. I'm going to make a High Sierra recovery partition, and then I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the internal drive. I'm going to link to this page, which is how to get old versions of macOS. And we're going to download High Sierra. So I'm going to click on this now. And this is going to give us a link to the App Store. So this is a really good way to do an upgrade because if you want to go from 10.8 to high zero it's a little bit complicated this is a kind of shortcut to get there so now I'll press get here and then we're going to type in our apple id then we're going to download mac os high sierra we can go to find an applications and we can find install mac os high sierra here and we're just going to go through the installer process so just press continue here agree agree and then we're going to be installing it onto the usb drive we don't want to install it onto the internal drive that's going to be an option later when we've got the recovery partition ready so when we're ready, just press the install button and then type in your user ID and password. So now that our backup is complete, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hard drive. So now in order to actually fix the boot loop issue, what I'm going to do is to install macOS High Sierra. And here we're going to install it onto the USB drive. So we're going to press install here, type in our admin password, and install onto the USB, and then install onto this USB drive. Once that's installed, that's going to have a new recovery partition, which is going to be a macOS High Sierra partition. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall macOS High Sierra on the internal drive. But first of all, we have to install it onto the USB drive. So this is going to start an installation process onto the USB stick. So the computer is going to restart and it's going to start the install process onto the USB drive. Here it's saying it's going to be 44 minutes remaining. So it takes around an hour, depends on the speed of your USB drive. So this is just installed High Sierra onto this, which is the appropriate operating system for this computer. What I'm going to do is to shut down the computer. And what we're going to do is reinstall macOS High Sierra onto the internal drive using the new recovery partition we created here. I'll wait for this to completely turn off, then turn this on again and hold down Alt. So once you boot up the drive, you'll see that we now have a new recovery partition here. So if the internal drive had a recovery partition, we could have used that. 
This one is the High Sierra Recovery Partition. We're going to go into that. This is based on the USB drive here from the USB boot disk we just created. So once we're in the disk recovery, this is the High Sierra version, so it looks a bit different from before. We're going to go to Disk Utility here. We're going to click on Reinstall Mac OS, then press Continue. Then at this stage, we're going to press Continue. And if the recovery server can't be contacted, we're going to go and connect to our Wi-Fi network. So once we're connected up, we're going to press Reinstall Mac OS again. And here we're going to press Continue, then Agree. And then agree again. And here we have the option here. We can install it on the internal drive or the USB drive. So I've done a backup of my Macintosh internal HD drive. So I'm okay with actually overwriting the operating system again. To just be aware, if you do this process, it can be destructive. But hopefully this is going to just overwrite the internal OS and then get this working again. So I'm going to select the internal drive and press unlock. Typing in my FileVault password, unlock. And then that's going to reappear again. I'm going to select it and then press install. Now it's doing a reinstall of the entire operating system. So just let that continue and hopefully it's going to fix the issue. So now that we've reinstalled the operating system onto the internal drive, it's actually logged straight in. This is despite the fact that we have the USB drive plugged in. So now I'm going to log into my user account and we're going to see if this does another boot loop as I did before. So the first time you re-log in after you've installed the operating system, it might take a bit longer than normal. So this is a little bit slow, but it's getting there. So here it's saying it's doing another part of the installation to just let that complete. So once the operating system's been reinstalled, all we need to do is turn on the computer and boot it up. So now this is booting up as normal. And now we can log into the account. So I'm just going to log in now. So as you can see here, we've managed to log into the computer. So that means that the operating system reinstall has been successful. We'll be able to get in and all of our data and our windows are still there. So everything's working as normal. So this method of using a USB drive to reinstall Mac operating system and then recreate a new recovery partition and then overwriting the internal drive's Mac operating system does work. It will get you out of this boot loop situation. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.